Right guys, welcome back to Revolution. Today, me and Dave, we're in the Brecon Beacons in Wales. We've got the, actually let's get off the bike and have a quick look. So, yep, size down is holding, that's good. I don't want that falling over again like I did in Croatia. So we've got the S1000XR, it's lovely BMW M Sport colours with the Arrow exhaust system. And obviously it's a good old GTR, as you all know, you've seen that plenty of times on the channel. So, we are basically doing a trek all over the Brecon Beacons, now, aren't we, Dave? Indeed, indeed. Uh, Having a good time. Where's the first place we're going to? Uh, I'm not going to say it because I can't pronounce it. So, <laughs> but we are doing the Gospel Pass, and we are at the moment on it. We're about two miles in. Um, just pulled over to get the camera get, get going, I think. Yeah, all right. Let's uh, get these bikes fired up and let's get going again. The weather's absolutely perfect for it today, isn't it? It's just, it's not too hot, not too cold, it's just spot on. Oh, squirrel. <laughs> Suicidal squirrel. They love it, mate. He's been waiting for us all that time. He has, yep. Yeah, the scenery around here is just absolutely gorgeous. And the roads we've ridden on already have been quite, um, just nice and sweepy, haven't they? Scenic. That's, that's a beautiful word for it, to be honest with you, Rich. It's, yeah. uh, Absolutely lovely, and I'll tell you what, it's just uh, very remote. What's that? Is that a GTO? Uh, yeah, Mitsubishi GTO. I bet you'd offer him a couple of quid for that, and he'd be like, Yeah, get off my driveway. That's uh, always a good thought in the uh, future. I've, I've always liked the GTO, but obviously, when I was 17, 18, for me to. Uh, do they want to move over a little bit? I know. Uh, you're alright, mate. Um, yeah, I could never afford the insurance on one, and then the price of them was still pretty high, and then they just carried on getting more and more expensive, so... Sadly, I never got a GTO, but I ended up with a Nissan S14 though, so I was quite happy with that, about 18 years old. Yeah, I, I think the GTOs though, most of them, well, well, I don't really know, but are they like, like quite a lot of automatics? Uh, yeah. That's the thing with the Japanese cars, there's a lot of automatics, um, and every now and again you do find your golden golden nugget and you get your golden, your, golden nugget the golden goose <laughs> and you get your you get your manual well, I can't read any of the signs anyway but anyway Aberin Maze Baran I probably absolutely yeah mate you'll you, you get you get butchered on the YouTube for this yeah absolutely butchered the Welsh language then but at least I gave it a go and failed miserably I mean these roads think, are just going to get more and more gorgeous the further we get into the uh, the beacons I mean, some of these houses, I mean, that's not that just a stunning impressive. place to be able to live, like, you know, yeah. along, along this route. Like, you're so far out, and obviously, they're before the start of the, um, this gospel pass, there's just a little garage, a few bits in it. Well, actually, quite a big garage, actually. It looked, it looked tiny, but actually, when you walked in, it was like a TARDIS. Yeah. But they all say, like, everywhere we've been, I've got to say, car, everywhere we've been, everyone's been exceptionally welcoming. Oh yeah. Yeah, they're really, really nice over here in Wales, the Welsh. Especially yesterday when we stayed at the uh, the King's Head. The uh, the hostess there, she was really, really helpful, wasn't she? Honestly, yeah, she couldn't do enough for you, really, you know? Yeah. Really nice place to stay. Really comfortable. Bed was sexually comfortable for, unfortunately, I got the single. Yeah. <laughs> I, walked, I walked in the room first. Bags easy double. <laughs> So the plan is, today, we're riding all over the Brecon Beacons and then basically we're going to end up going to the Burger Boys restaurant. Um, or hopefully we're going to end up at the Burger Boys restaurant and the burgers they do, well, online anyway, that they show you, are out of this world. They are like heart attack on a plate. Campers. Um, yeah, nice little campsite down there. There's a river down there as well. A little after from... No, I'm not even going to bother. <laughs> oh, that's a uh, hedgehog. With its guts out. Yeah. Very tight single track road here. Yes, indeed. We're going to have to turn off in a minute, so just be careful, mate. Yeah. Bit of a left, uh, left turn up here. Old ruins of a church there. Look at that Half Moon Hotel. So is it just after this then? I th oh yeah. Basically, we're just carrying on, mate. Just be careful. The car on the right. Is that like a? There's a wedding. Whoa. Yeah, I know. It's our right of way, lady. Yeah, but she's fucking coming out. I didn't want to fucking smash into the front of her. Yeah. She's waving us through, like, yeah, go on, yeah, go yeah, on. Yeah, 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 I'm like... Yeah, well, we are, because it's our right way, oh. Is that a coffee rest... Yeah, uh, a coffee stop. Can we yeah. go back there? 
We've had we've had one coffee each this morning, and it was instant hotel coffee with a little um, milk cart. I'd, I'd say a showing of milk. Yeah, but I mean, it was great. It, obviously, we forgot to ask for more because we're both coffee drinkers, so it was a bit of a, a bit of a faux pas, a faux pas on our side, to be honest with you. Yeah. So, so we're looking for a nice coffee stop. We'll try and find a Ponderosa and. Uh, Maybe even grab a little breakfast. We'll, um, we'll search for that after the pass, I think. So I've got good expectations for this pass because obviously I've just come back from Europe, having done like Stelvio Pass and a lot of the uh, insane passes in Europe. So I'm hoping Wales, on a Welsh level, actually delivers quite, quite good. To be honest with you, mate, it's through the mapping, and unfortunately. <laughs> my first time of actually putting something in and actually riding it so yeah well my sat-nav sat has still got no signal at all on google that's Earth. fine mate so i am just literally riding Morning. in a field so you wouldn't want to cross over this gravel easily would you absolutely Not to, yeah well while you're on the corner i don't think I'm no just, that's <laughs> not particularly uh it won't two, be one of the best days but i'll tell you no definitely not. on two road bikes bad times uh, it's alright mate, <laughs> we'll make it work. <laughs> I, do, I do miss the Africa Twin. Like, when, I, when I do things like this, I think, do you know what? Having the Africa Twin just gives you that ability to just go anywhere because it has the um, 7030 road tyres. Yeah. And, but then, in the grand scheme of things, I never took it anywhere. Well, actually I did, didn't I? I took it to Salisbury Plains. Salisbury Plains, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and had a cracking time there. Um, but, yeah, I mean that's why I ended up going for a um, what I would call a motorcycle rather than an adventure motorcycle because the GTR just does what I need to do um, and like the XR it just does everything you need and you don't go off road so the adventure bike is a bit like mm. the thing is it's great like adventure biking and like I was talking to a guy at work he's a uh, Tony right lovely chap um, he does all the ABI does a lot of green laning on like he's got a proper like he said, you know, he just goes on his sort of like a, well, the way I can explain it is basically like a scrambler, basically more in configuration scrambler rather than like a GS or, you know, like a big KTM, you yeah, know, yeah. those sort of adventure bikes or an Africa Twin. And it's just basically a scrambler, you know, and it's, and it does him. And he's like, it's better because you're able to move around with these big bikes and stuff. They just can't. Like people can make them work, and there are people out there that are skilled, but for someone like you and me, I think I would rather be on a, a lot smaller capacity bike and have more fun. Yeah. You know? You well, know. It's, like, it's like I was saying to you a minute ago off camera, that um, couple, Lavi and Ollie, they, they're they doing the trans-European route, or the TRL, trans, whatever it is, in, in the UK, it's basically green route, a green road route all around the UK, and they like unveiled their motorcycles that they were doing it on and they're 125s uh, Suzuki, oh, Suzuki 125s they've got beefy tyres and everything and the comments people were saying like, oh, you, you picked the wrong bikes you should be getting um, decent big off-road bikes and all this and I'm thinking they've done the exact thing that you need to be doing you've got a nice light 125 that if you get it bogged down in some mud you can literally pick it up and drag it out you exactly. do it on a big one, a big um, thousand cc off-road adventure bike, a GS, an Africa Twin, a Tenere, or something like that. You get stuck in the mud. You're stuck. Yeah, it's it's very heavy. Like something like this. I right? even, you know, I've had it. Um, you know, once I um sort of hit a bit of gravel and basically it was a slow fall, slow steady fall. But getting this up on your own, like you know, if you don't know the technique, it's a fucking heavy. It's a very very heavy bike. You know. Yeah. It is a very heavy bike, but something like a scrambler, mate, you, you, you know, oh, they're you're not, laughing. They're not, like, yeah, well, yeah, you can get it up, and, uh, you know, inexperienced people like that, doing that all day is not fun, picking up a heavy bike. No. I can assure you, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be on my top priorities of uh, having a good day, I can tell you, I can assure you on that. And so, if you're going on a green route around the UK, you are going to be falling off your bike and getting stuck a hell of a lot. Well, yeah, like, look, you know, we were looking years ago, weren't we, about that, um, you know, like what Ed Marsh does uh, on the C90. Yeah, and it yeah. was like uh, down in Devon, the C90 um, uh, off-roading thing. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, mate, I was well up for that. Unfortunately, obviously, time and... Unfortunately, time, money, and obviously, family. You know, not unfortunately for 
the family, but you know, it's unfortunate for me that you yeah. know, life gets in the way. But you know, I'm still, I'm still, even though I'm on a thousand cc and stuff, I'll still definitely go down to a, you know, I own a one two five. I think they're great fun. I think they're great fun for what you have. You know. Yeah, because you've also got to plan your ride. You've got to plan your overtakes. You can't like on these things. If we want to do an overtake, we can just do it. Yeah. Whereas on a 125, you've literally got to think, right, have I got enough room to overtake? Have I got enough room to land? Or, sorry, not room, time. Because oh, yeah. Time to react. Yeah, because you, you twist your throttle and nothing happens. <laughs> you twist your throttle on a knees and you've done a 10 car overtake in the blink of an eye. Oh, yeah. So it's like they are a bit more fun to ride because you've got to think a lot more about the ride. Well, that's the thing is, you know, it is a lot more. I find it's a lot more exciting on a smaller bike because you've got that, you know, it feels like you're going fast because they rev high, like, you know, with the RS125, it's a two-stroke, to get that going, you need to be up in the rev range, you need yeah. to be sort of, you know, not killing it, but anything under, you know, the power band, where it opens up, it's just, it's just like really hard to get the thing going, Yeah. especially when you de-restrict them, you know, and, um, well, great, that. great, great adrenaline rush for a 125. Big smiles, mate. Big smiles. Yeah. And the thing is, obviously, do it. And I think it's everyone has an opinion, and it's never right or wrong, as in to, to, to tell someone else to be like, no, you should be doing it on this sort of type of bike. You should be doing this. It's at the end of the day, it's what you want to do. It's, it's entirely, you know. Look at that. Look. <laughs> that race surface is completely broken up, isn't it? Um, yeah. The, what was I going to say, I've, I've still got that 125 um, Aprilia, uh, 125 Aprilia, like Havana or something, yeah. um, that I need to sort the carburetor out. Once the carburetor is sorted, it should run, because um, it's just dirty fuel sees the carb up. So I need to get that sorted, and then I've got a 125 like Vespa, basically. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I might, I'm tempted to either wrap it or paint it, because... The green that it is is like a minty green. It's kind of just looks a little bit tired. Yeah. So yeah, I'm tempted to give it a bit of a bit of a spruce up. Um, I might even ride it for a little bit. It's quite a nice little river down there. 